font 4, but used on radon control technologies used in buildings built from materials and maintained high levels of radon. Uh, it's uh, more uh, like a commercial for you to download the full version of Deliverable because it's impossible to like uh, say everything in uh, one hour. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks to all contributors, uh, our colleagues who uh, contributed uh, to uh, Milestone and, and Deliverable. Uh, you see it, it's quite a huge uh, group of people. So thanks to them, we were able to finish the Deliverable. And uh, now, uh, just the uh, basic structure or our program for today. Uh, it's uh, some something, uh, some little information about legislative framework, uh, something about standards and the recommendation we use in uh, our problematics, uh, basic uh, methods of protection of new buildings, uh, methods of remediation existing buildings, uh, some experience uh, from our uh, partners about radon rich building materials and uh, the main part of this presentation and I think most interesting to you will be uh, case studies uh, from uh, Czech Republic uh, Suro experience with uh, with such a problematic. Okay so to legislative framework uh, I think you are pretty familiar with such a directive. Uh, so we have, uh, of course, reference level for indoor radon 300 becquerels per cubic meter, and uh, mm, states in uh, European Union have to establish their own national action plan to deal with radon. But uh, we are focused here on uh, radon isolation from uh, building material. And uh, to be honest, like the only preventive measure uh, before you uh, like construct the house uh, is the measurement of uh, building material uh, in the uh, represented by activity concentration index. Uh, uh, if you are not above the index, you should not uh, be above one millisievert uh, per year from external radiation. But uh, this is also very, uh, very crucial for uh, prevention of radon isolation. For example, we in Czech Republic, before uh, implementation of European legislative, we had uh, special reference level for only radium uh, two to six content. It was even more strict uh, because uh, we had, uh, it's said, but we had a lot of experience with uh, uh, contaminated construction materials from, from the past. So now uh, used uh, standards and recommendations. Uh, I will talk about uh, especially the ISO 11665.7, uh, uh, because uh, together with uh, our uh, colleagues from ISS from Italy, uh, we are planning to uh, make a suggestion on improvement of this uh, this standard uh, because they uh, they developed uh, their own special method to measure measure isolation directly from the uh, wall surface in in house for example and uh, also we, we at suro are dealing now with uh, some measurements of uh, uh, granite uh, granite materials and uh, trying to use this, uh, this um, standard, but uh, it's uh, some, sometimes very tricky. Of course, we have uh, another standard dealing uh, directly with uh, isolation from building materials, but uh, this method, the, the next one, but this method is uh, quite uh, time consuming and, uh, and expensive. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, how we like, uh, yeah, working on it with our Italian colleagues. And uh, um, good uh, news uh, for this uh, other uh, uh, CENES, uh, construction products, uh, it seems that we will soon have uh, ISO standard for uh, measurement or determination of activity concentrations 
of radium, thorium, and potassium in construction products. So we are looking forward. Now about uh, protection of new buildings. Uh, uh, based on a questionnaire, uh, I will talk about uh, the questionnaire later. We realized that not all European countries have already established national criteria for use of building materials. And uh, very appreciated uh, is uh, again the work of our Italian colleagues uh, building a database of uh, activity concentration measurements of natural radionuclides, uh, uh, which is, I think, the second uh, next to the next to the measurement uh, of building materials. This uh, building a database is uh, like a second very important uh, preventive measure in such a field. Now, uh, like four, <clears throat> four basic approaches how to remediate uh, the existing uh, building with uh, uh, high exhalation uh, rate of radon from building material is uh, removing uh, building material with a higher exhalation rate, but uh, it's not always possible, you know, something uh, uh, it will uh, destroy the static of house uh, if you will try to do this. Uh, or reducing exhalation rate by coating the interior surface of the construction. Uh, we tried it in the 90s in, in uh, Czech Republic, but uh, we have no really good experience with uh, such a solution. Or you can create uh, aerated ventilation layer around the construction uh, with a higher than isolation rate, uh, but uh, you can imagine that uh, you will maybe dramatically reduce the volume of your uh, rooms. And uh, uh, the last, uh, well, not least, uh, uh, method is to increase the air exchange rate. Uh, and I must say that we have the best experience with such a remediation measure. Uh, now, uh, this is, uh, well, sorry for a lot of uh, text, but this is how the questionnaire for our partners looked like. Uh, we ask about uh, regulation, of course. We realize that not uh, in every country, as I said, uh, the implementation is done. Uh, we ask about uh, when they implemented, if they, they did, and uh, if uh, uh, there was any previous legislation uh, and if the change was significant. Uh, we asked about experience uh, with uh, problematic construction material in buildings. Uh, we asked about uh, measurement methods. We asked about methodology uh, and uh, maybe some computer programs uh, or models uh, used in a, such a field. And uh, of course, about the experience with application of such a measures. Uh, well, uh, the uh, deliverable is uh, is delivered, of course, but uh, if uh, you will uh, be interested in such a field, uh, you can still uh, contact me and uh, and answer on these questions because uh, we will be very very glad for Im improve our knowledge <clears throat> about situation in, in Europe uh, in such field. Yeah, and now uh, the I hope. Uh, most interesting part of uh, my presentations for you, the four case studies uh, from our own experience measurements in, in Sudan, Czech Republic. Uh, so the first case study deals with the uh, effect of extremely low air change, because uh, you know that uh, air exchange is uh, one of two crucial parameters, uh, which uh, uh, on, on which the concentration is based. So uh, we measured uh, in 2000, uh, two, uh, 2023, uh, it was relatively new uh, apartment building, two, old, uh, two years old at, uh, at that moment, uh, with one underground gar uh, garages and uh, six above uh, ground floors uh, in the center of the uh, city of Ostrava, uh, eastern part of Czech Republic. Uh, what we 
uh, knew about uh, the house. We had two reports from previous measurement by uh, private companies. Uh, one uh, ordered by the owner of the two flats we measured stated that the reference was uh, reference level was exceeded. And of course, the other ordered by the developer of, uh, of the apartment building state that the reference level was not exceeded. So what we did, uh, we realized that the house is constructed of reinforced concrete, but there was no evidence of elevated levels of natural adenoclides in the construction material. Uh, we measured maximum MBM dose equivalent about a uh, rate about uh, 0 0.5. Uh, 12 microsieverts per hour, so it's background, let's say. Uh, water is taken from the public water supply, which is controlled in Czech Republic, so this, this is not a source, definitely. Uh, we had information about site radon index, uh, determined as a part of planning application, and it was low, and uh, we did some grab sampling around the building, uh, and uh, realized that this measurement was okay, that there is really a low radon index. Uh, so uh, we did some uh, continuous and uh, integral uh, radon activity concentration measurements in both flats. Uh, uh, we did uh, grab air sampling uh, from the leaks of structure inside and from cavities. Uh, we determined the air exchange rate using the unique pseudo method based on tracer gas. Uh, and uh, we measured for one month. So what we realized, uh, the radon activity concentration results confirm that uh, the average radon label uh, is uh, very close uh, to reference level. And in one room, the reference level was exceeded. But at the same time, we realized because uh, nobody lived in uh, both apartments, uh, there was only uh, like workers and uh, technicians, let's say. So uh, it was really not used. And uh, we, we realized that the uh, air exchange was really, really low. Uh, thanks to uh, that fact, we also had a very nice uh, grow, radon concentration growth curve. I will show you on next slide. And we was uh, able to uh, independently, uh, sorry, in, in the, yes, independently uh, confirm these results, uh, making uh, analysis of uh, analysis of uh, growth curves. Uh, so now I will show you them. This is like two growth curves: one from flat in ground floor, second uh, flat in sixth floor. So this is the result. You, you can have uh, really, uh, like, let's say, clean building material without any significant contamination, which is okay in the, from the point of view of uh, index and so on. And, uh, but if, you, if you, your air exchange is really, really low, you can, have, uh, you can exceed the reference level just uh, from that source, because definitely at sixth floor, there was no any contribution from, from subsoil. Uh, now, case study two uh, about remediation of experience, uh, experience of remediation of uh, check start houses using central ventilation system. Uh, it's a long history. Uh, in uh, early 60s, uh, the new type of prefabricated house named Star was designed and started to be produced. Uh, but the supplier of the building materials was a company uh, called Prefa Hiskov. Uh, in Rinholetz, and uh, they used the uh, slack uh, with increased amount of uh, natural red nuclides. Uh, but uh, the, anyway, the panels uh, have been future used, uh, and uh, a lot of houses was constructed around, uh, you can see, 3,000 3, apartments. Uh, but what, what is very sad, uh, the like, uh, Mm. stakeholders uh, know about that problem in 50s and uh, the public health authority uh, banned the use of this material but uh, this information was lost uh, this is a clear example that we really need a strong and robust uh, uh, <clears throat> like uh, list of, of 
dangerous materials in Europe. Uh, and uh, the result or our investigation started uh, uh, in the end of 80s. Uh, measured ambient dose equivalent, which was up to two microsieverts per hour. Uh, average radon activity concentration in most houses uh, exceeded uh, action level, uh, which was uh, for uh, 100 pectorals per cubic meter at the time, and range, range uh, of measured uh, uh, concentrations was, was from uh, 100 to 1,500. Uh, and uh, at that time, our exchange rates uh, were quite high because uh, windows were leaky and uh, thermal properties of walls were very poor. Uh, all of these houses uh, was remediated with the state subsidy uh, applicated uh, by application of the central ventilation system. Uh, and it was most common remediation measure uh, at that time. Uh, unfortunately, it was primitive technique. Uh, heat recovery was very poor, uh, and uh, the power consumption was very high. Uh, after 2010, many of these houses underwent insulation and window exchange. Uh, that means we or they drastically uh, decreased uh, air exchange rate, and uh, today we have start houses uh, with. Uh, bigger radon activity concentration than before. Uh, we are still dealing with that problem because time to time one of these houses comes on market and uh, needs a construction, of course, uh, of the remedial measure. And each of these houses should be treated as a special case, uh, properly measured and uh, make a specific uh, solution of problem for every of these houses. Uh, because, uh, of course, we need uh, heat recovery nowadays. Uh, and uh, what is very interesting, uh, we must distinguish between uh, intake from intake of radon from subsoil and from the burning material. Because uh, when you will not do uh, this measurement, uh, you have you can have problem with application of of uh, you know, countermeasure because uh, if you will use uh, uh, like device which uh, make uh, which make uh, under pressure inside you can have a very big intake from subsoil so here is uh, the picture of uh, of this house so be aware if if you are planning to buy a house in Czech Republic, uh, don't buy this, this type of house. Uh, now, case study number three, uh, very, mm, let's say, uh, peculiar solution of the start uh, house problem. Uh, in the late 80s, uh, in Eastern Bohemia, there was a measurement in one of that houses and that confirmed elevated ambient dose equivalent rate. However, uh, it did not exceed legislative level at that time and even uh, not from today's point of view. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we had a two month uh, integral measurement of average radon activity concentration by trace detector in the house. And uh, we realized that uh, maximum average uh, level was 800 pectorals per cubic meter, which is, by the way, like a uh, very common uh, value in uh, Czech houses. So nothing, nothing really special. But uh, uh, we also uh, took a sample of the building material and uh, analyzed it in, in Gamma Lab. And we realized that uh, the index is uh, quite high, it's about nine. And the radium mass activity concentration is 2,050 decibels. Sorry, 500 becquerels per uh, kilogram. Uh, by the way, this is uh, like uh, normal uh, content in the start uh, of radium in start houses materials. Uh, the municipality which owned the house uh, decided to demolish building primarily for socio-economic prevention reasons. Uh, 
but of course from a hygienic point of view uh, this is uh, certainly not uh, a step in accordance with the uh, principle of optimization uh, even with, with such uh, uh, levels of, uh, of radium and so on uh, we are still able to mitigate the situation and uh, and uh, make the house to be uh, like suitable for living mm. but uh, they decided to demolish it okay uh, suddenly uh, you have uh, another problem because when you demolish this house uh, you have like uh, you have waste radioactive waste so uh, we had to uh, we have to fit the necessary measurements on site uh, determine the personal doses of demolition workers optimize the demolition process uh, and uh, demonstrate that the material could be deposited at a waste dump in accordance with applicable legislation. So uh, clearly a demolition of such a house is also not a good uh, yeah. uh, good step. Uh, and last case study, case study four, again, we have, uh, we have Rinholetz prefab plant uh, and material slug concrete from with high content radium uh, and in uh, I think late 60s uh, the wall housing estate uh, was uh, was uh, constructed uh, very close to, to Prague uh, so uh, again uh, we did measurements uh, and uh, realized that uh, the uh, action uh, former action level uh, was exceeded even nowadays reference level 300 becquerels uh, was exceeded in such point of view uh, and uh, in the what is more in 2015 the apartments was newly thermally insulated uh, so it means that again uh, the, the the problem raised uh, and uh, uh, with respect uh, to the resin source coming from the building material, uh, there was uh, made some remediation and it was based on installation heat recovery units operating in pressurized mode uh, in apartments with higher values of radon. Uh, so we, or they, uh, increased significantly as we will see on the graphs uh, on, on the yeah, the air exchange rate. And uh, after some time, uh, we uh, come back and make a, a new measurement to compare the situation before the remediation and a few years after the remediation. It was, uh, by the way, uh, it was, by the way, uh, part of a regional project, this measurement, especially. Uh, only problem is that before we had uh, 32 me apartments measured, uh, and after only 15, you know, it's uh, about the the people living there if they want or don't want us to let us measure there. Uh, so this is a comparison uh, of uh, radon entry rate uh, before and after remedy. Uh, must say that. Uh, some apartments which was measured after was not measured before so uh, we can say that uh, this uh, this heat recovery units uh, didn't significantly change the entry date of course because uh, the entry rate from they don't entry rate from building materials uh, doesn't depend on on uh, like movement of air in, in inside and now, uh, as I promised, uh, the change of air exchange rate uh, on the left before and uh, on the right after. And uh, radon activity concentrations in, in flats, uh, again, on the left before and on the right after. Uh, what we realized uh, by this uh, measurement, uh, you can see if I will go back to the air exchange rates that they are really high. And uh, here on the right, the radon activity concentrations are 
uh, very, very low. So uh, we realized that uh, if uh, we will change uh, the set of uh, the units, uh, we can save uh, about uh, 120 euros per year for one apartment and still be under reference level. So now uh, some conclusions. Uh, Redon uh, from building materials have uh, its characteristics uh, and uh, basically it's uh, independence uh, in time uh, from the point of view of intake. So if you will not dramatically change the temperature or, or uh, humidity uh, inside, uh, you will have like a permanent source, uh, un independent, uh, independent on, uh, on time. So this is the main characteristic of freedom from building material. Uh, if you uh, want to make some solution, if you have problem with high concentrations, uh, you have to distinguish uh, between between radon from subsoil and uh, radon from building material because there are some measures uh, that can make the situation even worse. For example, uh, under pressurized uh, interior. Uh, and uh, the best uh, best uh, and uh, very important is to have preventive measures. Uh, as, as I said, uh, measurement, measurement of building materials before it goes to market and uh, a robust uh, like uh, list of, uh, of uh, building materials to prevent the situation uh, I, uh, I spoke about, uh, for example, start houses. So, uh, this is all from my side for today. Uh, thank you for your attention and it's, uh, it's time for your questions.